Thank you to, um, <coughs> to Susan Barry for Welcome to Country. Thank you uh, particularly to uh, Melinda for <coughs> uh, extending this invitation to, to be at the ANU. It's been um, and continues to be a sort of wonderful opportunity to um, think about some of the <coughs> what I'll call forming situations in um, research practice and uh, public policy in Australia. And I suppose, in essence, what I'm hoping to uh, communicate this morning is um, a proposition about uh, a changed cultural and political uh, landscape um, as regards uh, discourses around um, design, um, storytelling, and um, definitions of social and uh, environmental resilience. It's not um, a scientific hypothesis. Uh, it really is um, a <coughs> reflection on the experiences I've had in this rather hybrid territory of moving between um, investigations of um, histories of communication and non-communication between different cultures in this country uh, with a particular focus on um, the ways in which spatiality um, and through that um, shared or sometimes contested trajectories in a colonized country can translate themselves into forms of civility and inclusiveness. So somewhat utopian um, and the kinds of remarks and experience that I want to share this morning, um, extremely susceptible to detailed critique in different places, but I'm not too concerned about that. I'm quite happy to be fairly vulnerable. In material thinking, I make the paradoxical claim that true collaboration, strong collaboration, is based on weakness. In other words, it's not like an operatic set where you have very fixed roles. Um, it depends on a certain willingness to, to be weak, to acknowledge inconsistencies, <coughs> not to be complacent about them, obviously to investigate them and seek to change them, but um, the process involving one that we heard about in the Welcome to Country, the heart as well as the head. And I think that's part of where an engaged, um, if you like, creative research community, which is a fairly parasitic community, dependent on the expertise <coughs> that comes out of um, disciplines as diverse as sociology, psychology, anthropology, and planning, uh, sits. It's um, consciously, um, if you like, uh, weak but maybe that's no bad thing. Um, I'm not going to create an artificial uh, arcana of mystery around this title. I want to explain it very quickly and get it out of the way. It's as simple as this. Uh, in relation to um, the placemaking practice, we'll just let placemaking sit there for the time being. <coughs> a large part of what I suppose I'm interested in doing is, is trying to overcome European notions <coughs> of places in closure and to replace that uh, with a much more um, interactional, processual, um, and performative notion of placemaking, but let's just keep placemaking there. The, the central issue that arises in large um, urban projects, um, public art projects in Australia, has to do with the language of representation. Uh, where now uh, it's um, con conventional and normal practice to have a consultative group that involves indigenous interests, whether or not they're supported by um, land title claims or whether it's done on, on the basis of uh, a moral repatriation of, of intellectual property. Uh, the expectation is that the language of discussion as we start to ideate, as we start to think what the new form is going to be, whether it's a public square, new facility, <coughs> uh, it could be uh, a new just program of events, uh, the default position is um, computer-aided design. So it's basically what comes up on the screen. So I'm using screen memories, obviously, in a complex, I hope, way. Uh, it could be referring to the, the uh, ubiquitous screen culture, where we all have screens in public squares. Obviously, it has a Freudian possibility. What I'm interested in is particularly the screen as the site for the ideation of new designs. Um, so, and therefore, what happens to uh, the line? The line which is both the gesture of drawing out but it's also the way that we constitute the outline of a form that's going to be there in the future. So that's what I mean by screen memories. I'm referring to the, the default position that exists, <coughs> even where one might be talking uh, with communities whose primary uh, investment in ideation is volumetric, that is to say choreographic, gestural, processual, dialogical, 
uh, we often go back to a very uh, shallow idea of how that uh, process of placemaking will be represented. What are the challenges of that? Uh, and as you can tell, even just to announce that, is to, is to put us into a place of, of praxis, uh, where somehow we're trying to deal with the planners on the one side, the architects on the other side, um, people who are um, visually trained, and that tends to mean um, trained to look at images, rather than trained to perhaps you know, listen carefully to the, the rhythm of the sand. What happens to the, the, the volume of place? So volumetrics in this is, 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 is simply um, the problem of measuring the hollow, measuring what might be the between, the inter-essay, what lies between us, which after all is the meeting place. So in a sense, th things that we intuitively understand immediately, but because of the difficulty of um, documenting them, particularly in, in CAD or in parametric design, uh, we tend to leave them out. Um, I'm entirely dependent for the the uh, interventions I make into um, public space design uh, on the skills of my son, um, who is a very talented um, modeler, designer, architect. And so we have quite, shall we say, uh, a testy intergenerational exchange where I'm endlessly insisting that he knows no history and he's endless, <coughs> endlessly rolling his eyes and saying, you know, it would not be nearly as hard if you could just, you know, use Rhino or something like that. And so, so anyway, uh, this is probably quite productive. And there's actually, which I won't go into today, there's actually a, probably a moderately interesting discussion there about what happens um, in universities more generally across that analog digital line, which is still current until we retire. Mm -hmm. About 18 months probably. Um, so screen memories then is referring to uh, what I'll call the dominant mode of, of uh, representation that's used in these placemaking exercises. Um, the reason that there's a problem is because it doesn't really deal very well with volumetric ideation, <coughs> and therefore it creates a problem of representation. Um, this, um, just to put you further in the picture about speaking from the heart as well as the head, maybe also from the hand, this is the kind of drawing that I do when I'm working with communities. Um, this is actually in Alice Springs. Um, and these drawings are uh, ideation drawings. What they do is they provide what seem to me graphic analogues of dialogue. So this was a process where we were discussing uh, <coughs> the problematic of convergent storylines across two cultures. Uh, the pages in the background refer to possible ways of annotating the Overland Telegraph in relation to the building a place of reconciling in the middle of Alice Springs. Um, the, <coughs> the, the sort of kind of plate cells you can see sort of floating around on the surface there uh, refer to various safe places. Um, would a meeting place be a meeting place, or would it, in the form of Arakawa and Ginz's theory of, of places, be a sequence of landing places? In other words, a sequence of overlapping contracts, uh, a performative moving, which at the same time provides a form of stability. And you can go on. Um, what is useful, I find, with these things is, of course, whilst they're fairly enigmatic out of context, in context there's a strong sense of identification. Everybody can sign up to this. Uh, they're not committed to anything. So it's a classic example um, of strong collaboration. Uh, the very weakness of this <coughs> as a final outline is to its advantage. Um, if anything, it captures uh, a sense of uh, imminence or movement, if we're lucky. And what I want to do um, is not... not <coughs> yes, I want to just give you a short history of how I got into this, um, because that um, uh, will give you, in a certain sense, the ammunition to critique and say, well, okay, to what extent <coughs> is what he's doing any different from other kinds of uh, colonizing activity where indigenous capital is taken and reappropriated for, for, <coughs> for somebody else's use? Um, a, a criticism that we can work through if it's, if, it's, if it's felt to exist. I want to talk briefly about two um, placemaking projects which, um, to some degree, <coughs> I think typify um, the, um, the application of the proposal in, in this conference, this proposal that we, we, we now sit in a different place um, in relation to um, representations of um, uh, place in Australia and the application of those insights to uh, the practical purposes of, of urban design or, for that matter, landscape design. So a place where 
some of these uh, issue, issues and uh, themes which have been separate now just coalesce in a quite chaotic fashion. So I'll be referring to Golden Grove, which is a landscape work at the University of Sydney, and to Passenger, which is a work in progress at um, Yegan Square, named for an early freedom fighter, as we would say now, <coughs> for the Noongar people. And Yegan Square is the new civic square in the centre of Perth. So when the Premier decided to rename it, and that, he's certainly up the ante. Um, when in, I was um, writing The Road to Botany Bay shortly after coming to Australia, I was very taken from the very beginning about uh, the, the challenge of uh, interpreting um, indigenous art. In this case, um, a plate from uh, Gray's Expeditions into Western Australia. Um, <coughs> and uh, the way in which he describes, um, and indeed, as you can see, represents um, a Wangina figure from the Kimberley uh, was to me a classic example uh, in those early days of how um, a cultural frame laid over an, un, uh, an unfamiliar um, visual object produces certain kinds of clear distortions. So <coughs> this figure gets um, changed, obviously, into a Semitic kind of or Babylonian priest. And indeed, as you'll know, if you're familiar with the passage in which Gray responds to this. Um, he attempts to offer it a genealogy from outside of Australia. Um, there's a whole set of drawings in that second volume of the expeditions. Um, the other reason for mentioning that even in those early days, what fascinated me was the, was the uh, extraction of uh, the rock art from the volumetric. So it's presented on a flat page, whereas, of course, uh, and it's a project I'm now going back to in a different context, um, these are echo locations. Um, they're places where there are certain kinds of multisensory resonance, 